I chased more women that reminded me of my mother. Growing up, I was favored the least. So I felt like I always was looking for that acceptance from my mother. So I was more attracted to women that favored me the least. And the women that did give me love, I don't even believe you. In honor of Pride Month, this episode is made possible with the support of Spring Health. Does your mask have any particular meaning? I got this saying where God gifts everybody. Everybody has a gift and a purpose. So that empty is pretty much saying, give all of your gifts while you're here, walk in your light before you leave. So can you talk a little bit about what your style says about you? My style is that I'm simple. Doesn't take much for me to feel complete. Have you always been that way? I could say I've tried to squeeze into places that I didn't belong before. I would dim my light so people could feel comfortable in my presence, so I would make myself small just to not feel alone. So can you talk about assumptions that people make about you based on how you appear? They assume that I want to be a man. A lot of people are intimidated by my presence, so they think I'm mean, conceited. I've always played sports. I always felt like the protector. That's my true nature. It does reside more in the masculine energy, but I don't want to be a man. It's always been um, the men that's been more intimidated by my presence. I've had this one encounter where I was, me and my woman was walking on Miami South Beach, and he put his whole body out the window and, and yelled out, what a waste, what a waste. Can you talk about what has been your biggest struggle? Accepting love. Growing up in my household, we didn't really express ourselves. I don't ever recall an exchange of I love you. We lacked a lot of emotional support. So I didn't really know what love looked like. I entered a lot of relationships guarded. And I would let you fall in love with me, love me. But I would not, I'm not very uh, receptive. I would do way more for you and make life so easier for you, but you cannot do anything for me. Mm -hmm. It's easier for me to walk away. Mm -hmm. You're more attached to me than I will ever be to you. I'm emotionally detached. Mm -hmm. And that happened really at the age of four. I didn't meet my real mother and father until the age of four. I went straight from the hospital when she gave birth to me into my Auntie Donna house. So it was my Auntie Donna, my, my uncle Bobby, my uh, cousin Bobby, and my cousin Kendra. And I thought that was my brother and my sister, my mother and my father until the age of four. My mother was going through some legal stuff. I didn't find out why I didn't see them until I was older. And my mother had to tell me that she was trying, but my auntie wanted to keep me. She wanted to adopt me, and my father was okay with that, and my mother wasn't. Did you have a memory? Like it was yesterday. We was in my auntie down the house. I had on a white top that was like ruffles and stuff on it, and with the little red, the little red dress house with white socks. And we had, I had these uh, shoes on, we used to call Sally Walkers. I looked out the window and I seen a station wagon pull up. And I just walked off and then they came into the house. Both your parents? Yes. They came into the house and I'm looking like, who are these people? And they was trying, pretty much like telling me to, to come here. And I ran to my auntie down and I said, mama, don't let them take me. I still see it like it was, it was yesterday. Thinking this was my family and to being pulled away from them like that, it really detached me emotionally. And I didn't figure that out until I had to go to therapy. I was with somebody that said she's not gonna marry me until <laughs> I see a therapist because she felt like something was wrong with me emotionally. So what made it click was my last four year relationship, she was telling me I was emotionally selfish. 
Mm-hmm. I knew I loved her, but I knew I didn't love her the way she loved me. And they all said the same thing. Mm-hmm. They all can't be lying. Mm-hmm. She put her heart in my hands. With me, it was, well, I, I hold yours, but I'm not handing you mine. I would do things in my relationship that was really embarrassing to the women that I've dealt with. Uh, seeking validation outside of my relationships. Because you can tell me you love me, I didn't believe you. So how you respond to me in this relationship, I wanted to confirm that by going outside of the relationship and dealing with other women and see how they respond, if I could get the same response from them. So whenever this ended, because I wasn't all in anyway, you're not taking anything from me with you. The four year relationship I was in ended, the one who told me that I was emotionally selfish. It wasn't even a month. I don't even think it was a week before I was taking this this young lady to the movies. We was going out on dates, just out to eat and everything. And it's just, I'm crazy. something wrong with me. Like I could disconnect from something and someone so quickly. I had a roommate. Things went south with me and that roommate because I had intimacy with her ex. She played a huge part in me seeing myself times 10. I'm very stubborn. She was worse. Mm -hmm. My ego could be in a driver's seat and control situations. Hers was worse. I was giving her me like we was in a relationship, the me that my exes was asking for. Mm -hmm. I was committed to a relationship that had no commitment. It wasn't even a relationship. When you were on the other side of it. I was on the other side of it. So I got to see myself being in my ex's shoes. I, I I saw me, the lack of accountability. I didn't, I didn't like myself. I really didn't like myself. But now, I went from that extreme to the next. There was no balance, no middle ground. And I showed up in these situations where I'm like, I'm giving. And I've noticed that those women made too many attempts to try to walk over me. And I just asked God for clarity. First, I was rushing the process. Second, I'm still avoiding the things I need to deal with. I'm, st- I'm still surrounding myself with all of these distractions. I'm still looking for them to do something only I could do for myself. Mm-hmm. So when I asked for that clarity, it was, I, I literally like, I feel like God just took my life, put it on a reel, and just rewind it all the way back till I was four. I was continuing my mama's story instead of living my own, it was, it was like God was showing me I wasn't the environment that I grew up in. I always tell people, like, just ask for clarity, but you have to be open to it. A lot of us don't want to see the truth. A lot of us don't want to sit with ourselves. A lot of us find comfort in being unhappy. I call it happily unhappy because it, it's scary to explore new grounds, to see what's on the other side of things. Scary for a lot of people. Well, it's scary to feel that original pain. Yes. You spend your whole life running from that original pain. But you still but the, the pain. Way, the results of that is much worse than the actual pain. Yes. Well, you make a decision on how you want to show up in this world. And you become consistent in doing that. You don't know when it truly shifts because it become a natural state for you once you choose something. It was easier for me to be hard and everybody just thought I was strong. And you know, the strong is the least checked up on. So I'm realizing that I, I put myself in a position where I have nobody to lean on because I've always been a person that everybody can lean on. I never showed that I go through this too, that I hurt too. So I didn't, just knowing I was alone and that everybody used me, I had nobody to use, just made me start giving myself what I needed. Does it have nothing to do with trust? Yes, but I had to learn that it's not about trusting other people. It's about trusting yourself to experience people and expand it from those experiences. Everybody you encounter serves a purpose if you allow it to, if you're open to that. But sometimes we're so focused on what we want out of things, we miss out on what we need. 
I trust that everything I experience is not meant to break me, but to build me up. And so have you now, have you had any like more fulfilling different experiences romantically now that you are this new person? Yes. One thing I've had to understand was the attachment part, right? If I'm attached to the outcome of my relationships, it is hard for me to be in them wholeheartedly. So me being in this relationship after I put in all the work and I've come to these understandings, I'm able to show up wholeheartedly and not worried about if it's gonna end. I can help her grow in a, in a lot of areas. And she was so receptive to that. She's like, my best friend. I love, I like love, love her, but I'm still okay with the outcome. Mm -hmm. So I'm still not going to force anything. I'm still not going to pretend to be or have what I don't have. And do you feel you're able to receive? Oh, uh, she pampered me yesterday. She gave, she gave me a spa, spa night. She ran me bath, put rose petals in there, and you know, the champagne and the candles. and. It makes me nauseous at first. And I, I, I was open with her about it too. I was like, to allow myself to receive love makes me nauseous. Cause I always been the one showing up for everybody else. Oh, I got you, I got you, I got you. And I made it so easy for people to love me. It's nauseous getting, it makes me nauseous like getting love back. So I was a little lightheaded, but I let it happen and I allow myself to just receive. What's your favorite part of your body? My hair. <laughs> your hair? Do you associate it with any kind of femininity or no? Ooh, that's a good question. I think subconsciously I do. I didn't tap more into my feminine side until a couple of years ago. I feel like I'm not attractive without my hair. Why in your body, in your skin, in your journey, why is it a good place to be? My journey going from how I used to be to who I've become, I wouldn't know what I wanted to become without existing in ways I didn't desire to exist. Thank you so much. That was just very, very amazing. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of What's Underneath with Aina, made possible with the support of Spring Health. And for more interviews like these, make sure you guys subscribe to Style Like You on YouTube. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're reminded every time we drop a new episode on Thursdays.